Hello Aries, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what's ahead for you this week. Okay, Aries, we have the lovely star in your cards. It's right here. It is one of the brightest cards of the deck. And the top three cards are a little bit challenging. I think some things are gonna be put on hold. There's going to be delay in communication. And also there can be hesitation about the things that you need to say or want to say. Now, the bottom row, we have the garden and stork along with the stars. So this is a happy event. Thanks to the stars, there can be a lot of activity or you could be going places, um, networking, maybe partying, celebrating. The garden is very uh, outdoorsy, if you like. It's very social. And with the stork, it clearly suggests that you're gonna go out and have some fun or maybe go out and network and get busy with things. And with the stars, it's clear that there is some really good news or, or that you are really excited about the prospects. Now, the thing about the coffin letter and clouds is that they sort of throw a wrench a little bit in your enthusiasm. They slow things down and I think they cause you to have doubts that maybe you didn't initially anticipate. So the coffin with the letter suggests that there's a delay in communication or perhaps at this stage you don't hear back. And with the clouds, um, there is a sense of uh, tension or doubt. Maybe you're concerned, you're worried about why you're not hearing from this person or from um, the party or the side that you're communicating with. So this sort of messes up a little bit your initial enthusiasm and it looks uh, areas like you have to be patient with things. Looking at this side, we have the garden with the coffin and clouds. So again, this clearly suggests a waiting game of sorts. Something is on hold or you're not sure what's happening with it. And also, it's possible that you could be having second thoughts, doubts about whether um, this is actually going to work out. So initially, we see the happiness and the excitement with the stars about this um, space and what's going on in this space. But in this diagonal, we see that you're wondering if it's actually going to materialize. Now, with the stars, letter and clouds, there's a similar idea uh, that you're, not, you're having second doubts about this. So the clouds on this side after the stars suggest that your hopes and your ambitions are a little bit dampened. So that can cause you a bit of a, a bit of tension. And the letter and clouds can suggest that maybe the news is not what you thought or maybe the feedback or the outcome of the interaction here is not what you thought. So it can throw some doubt into the picture. Now within the week Aries, I don't really see this being resolved. I think you have to maybe work with it, put up with it a little bit. And maybe in the following week you hear news or you know what to do about this. Right now, it sounds like things are a little bit up in the air uh, this week and it doesn't sound like you can do much about it right away. Now, the cards apply in any context. Um, they can be about your social life or something work related, uh, but the dynamics are the same. So let's just take a couple of examples. Uh, starting with your social life. So the garden is associated with your social life. And so maybe you were excited about certain events or activities, but then it's possible that plans flop a little bit or things change and it's not what you initially had planned for or what we're expecting or wanted. And so it causes a bit of tension. This can be with a certain group of people or maybe with a specific person. If it's about work, for example, maybe you're looking at a job or some projects you wanna be part of or involved with and initially you have that enthusiasm and that excitement and hope for it uh, but with the top cards things sort of change a little bit and they affect um, they affect your uh, what you thought was going to be possible so these are my suggestions based on these cards Aries let me know how they play out for you I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback as always very best of luck with the week thank you for tuning in and until next time take very good care of yourself Hello Taurus, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay Taurus, here is your pyramid. It is looking bright. We have the flowers and the tree and the rider is quite active at the top. The fish is very focused on money usually and it's about work and business. So this could be the area that you're focusing on this week. And it looks like things are growing and progressing. So this is great for money and uh, better income or more prosperity or more opportunities. 
Starting with the bottom row, we have the Cross and Mountain. Now, this is quite an interesting pair as far as I'm concerned. It suggests an important phase that is unfolding, and maybe at this stage, Taurus, you're not fully aware of how significant this can be for you. The flowers is lovely for healing and success and hopes materializing, so I think there's quite a lot of excitement about the direction that you're heading in. You definitely want to engage your creativity and engage with these projects so that you align uh, with your goals and your purpose. So these are lovely cards that bring exciting opportunities. Now the fish and tree is a clear message of money growing or finances doing well or prosperity increasing. It's a great combination for well-being in general, uh, materially and otherwise. And it's clear, Taurus, from these cards that you're on the right path here for some improvement in this area. Now, the Rider is an exciting card. It's often a card of news, so it can bring some news. It can bring a message or a messenger. Uh, but it's also really good for activity and going after your goals. So, so this is looking like a busy week where things are progressing and you're making progress and you're seeing tangible results uh, from your effort. Um, these are great cards for any area that is related to work, money, and practical affairs, and actually in any context as well. It's just that the fish really focuses more on this. So it's great for jobs where maybe you get a raise or you get a client or something improves or other opportunities are in the works for you or perhaps you're setting up investments or doing things for your, uh, for your life and your financial picture that is, um, that is um, aligning you with longer term goals and an important chapter that is about to unfold. The writer also encourages you to take initiative, Taurus. So this is an active week. Take steps, take action. Um, you'll find that things flow smoothly because uh, the cards are really supportive and they, they help you move through these tasks and move towards your projects and your goals. The flowers with the fish and rider is, again, great for uh, money, great for an increase. It can be a result of your creativity. And the mountain with the tree and rider can possibly suggest a location abroad or farther from where you are. This could be part of what you're pursuing, uh, what you're doing with uh, your financial strategy here or your growth strategy. Uh, so that can be exciting too. So, so anyway, we look at these card stores. They are bright. They bring success. And again, remember to be active and to pursue your objectives and engage your enthusiasm and creativity. I think you'll find that it leads to really good results. So let me know how you like these ideas, Taurus. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's see what is in store for you this week. Okay, Gemini, here is your pyramid. And again and again, we're seeing new beginnings for you and powerful changes. We have the child and the scythe at the top, and we do have a couple of challenging cards. The bear isn't always challenging, but with the mouse here or the mice, it would suggest some challenges. Now it's not very dramatic, but the bear can make it a bit more dramatic. Now the child with the heart and mice points to a wonderful new beginning that you are looking forward to, but I have to say that there can be some issues as you go about this or as you take these first steps, Gemini. So it can cause a bit of doubts, a bit of heartache here uh, because of the heart next to the mice, but the child with the heart is really great for a happy new beginning. So it's like there's both happening at the same time. You know, when changes happen, sometimes we are a little bit um, hanging hanging on to the, the previous situation, but we are also looking forward to the new one. And so this could be what is happening for you here at Gemini. Now, the woman and bear can represent yourself or someone else. Uh, it suggests someone who is strong and powerful, and it's a really good combination for empowerment. And also, Gemini, this person gives you support. So you could get someone's back here, get someone's support, uh, probably to make these changes. The scythe is very much a, a card of release. And uh, so there is a, a sense of a severance here. There is a letting go and a change. And it's pretty swift, it's pretty sharp, and it could be pretty final as well. So with the woman and bear and the earlier cards, it's clear that there is a new beginning and someone could help you with it. Or perhaps, you know, it's something that you have to tackle right now and you have to make this change. Um, so these cards are kind of neutral, I would say. The mouse can cause it to be a little bit challenging, but certainly the heart suggests that you're looking forward to this. And the child by itself is actually quite a happy card.
Now, the child with the woman and scythe is again focusing on this new beginning. Clearly, the child and scythe points to a break off or a separation of sorts and embracing this new beginning. And the woman, like we said, can be yourself, Gemini, or someone else who um, supports you with this change. The mouse with the bear and scythe is, again, a very powerful change, and I think it's a tough one. I think with the mouse and bear, there can be some challenges here, um, maybe a bit bigger than the mouse usually on its own. And uh, the idea with the bear and scythe is that you really need to take your power back, Gemini. So it sounds like you, you, need to, you need to feel empowered about this change and take your power back. Someone could be annoying you or someone could be standing in your way or they could be like they could be blocking you in, in a way or other. But I do think, Gemini, that you overcome this and this change is, is pretty much in the cards. Um, now, in terms of personal relationships, I suspect that a breakup or a change in the relationship is possible. We have the scythe and heart next to each other, and this typically points to a heartbreak. So it sounds like there is a change here that comes with a bit of a heavy heart, and this new beginning, um, you know, I, th I think you have to embrace this new beginning anyway, Gemini, but it does come with, with a bit of a challenge or you know, the change is maybe not easy on yourself, or perhaps it affects another person um, that possibly is represented by the woman, uh, maybe not. Um, and uh, so it affects the whole situation in this way. Now, the cards can be in a specific area of your life, or it could be in your life as a whole. Um, so if, for example, work, work wise, there can be changes at work, maybe you're leaving a customer or a team and making changes, and it's a bit difficult in, in the process. Or in a personal relationship, I suspect some kind of a separation, uh, Gemini, it's not very dramatic, but I think you're going to draw a sharp line. So it can be a powerful moment for you this week, Gemini, with these powerful changes, and the scythe could be the time when you draw the line. Let me know what you make of these cards. Let me know how they play out for you. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with a Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Cancer, here is your pyramid. It's looking like a mixed bag of a couple of different energies here. We have some challenging aspects with the mouse and heart, but we have the sun, which is an all around bright card. In fact, the sun is one of the brightest cards of the deck. Now, I feel that with the ship and mouse and the mouse and heart and the tree and mouse, so the different combinations that surround the mouse, there can be some challenges and there can be some issues that you have to deal with. But I think you're in for uh, a bright week and some things materialize. So let's take these combinations in turn. Now the tree with the ship and tower, I feel slows things down and the mouse would contribute to that actually. You are on a path of growth and you're on the right track and you're pursuing your objectives. But I feel there's a little bit of routine and boredom um, with your, uh, you know, with this path and this involvement. Uh, cancer, but I think you're on the right track overall. So it sounds like it's a predictable thing for you and you are on the right track to achieve objectives. Now the mouse and sun is a bright card because the sun easily overcomes the mouse. So you, you maybe you were struggling with some things or things were on hold or there were issues or problems that you need to solve and it's clear that you're able to solve them very, um, very well. And so the sun being so much uh, stronger than the mouse um, easily overcomes it. Now the heart at the top I feel has to do with your ambitions and the things that you are interested in. Like I said earlier I feel there's a bit of boredom, a bit of routine and maybe at this stage you're looking to re-engage cancer, you're looking to increase your enthusiasm or maybe change things up a little bit so that you have more enthusiasm in the things that you're doing. The tree with the mouse and heart can be a little bit challenging because the mouse and heart causes a bit of a heartache, some doubts. And with the tree, I feel that again, there's this element of, well, are you really interested in what you're doing? 
um, I feel that you could be a bit um, bored with it. You know, maybe it's repetitive at this point. Uh, but the tower with the sun and heart is very lovely, Cancer. It brings long-term success and well-being and happiness. And you're definitely on the right track for longer-term objectives. They're also great cards for work in general. Um, so a promotion is possible or you know, being on the right track. The mouse can represent some challenges, but I don't think they're... Uh, enough to overturn or affect the bigger picture. Uh, so it's it sounds like it's temporary. You need to deal with some issues right now. And I think you easily overcome them and you're back on track. Uh, but again, in a broader sense, Cancer, if this is about re-engaging or finding yourself or realigning with some of your interests so that you have more enthusiasm, uh, then definitely do that. I'm not really seeing relationship cards. The heart can be about other people, but in this context, it's really just more about feelings. Um, so I think this is more about you and your path and your routine and the things that you're pursuing cancer. So don't lose track of how well you're doing. Don't lose track that you're on the right track and the issues that come your way. You know, if you need to take time out, do that solve these issues and I think you'll be you'll overcome them soon enough and see if they, you have new ways of engaging or to raise the interest or enthusiasm towards the things that you're doing so let me know what you make of these ideas cancer as always I look forward to your feedback very best of luck with the week thank you for tuning in and until next time take very good care of yourself hello Leo welcome to your weekly reading we are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck Let's see what is in store for you this week. Okay, Leo, here is your pyramid layout. We have the snake, which is a little bit tricky. We have the news card, which points to some important news because of the bear. And we have the child and moon that points to a new phase. So this is quite interesting, Leo. You could be uh, making changes or moving in a new direction or an offer comes through and you take it up. But the snake is gonna be a bit tricky. Let's see what it looks like in this overall uh, pyramid, starting with the bottom line. We have the child, letter, and bear. So clearly with the child and letter, there is a new beginning, a new offer, a new opportunity that comes through news or some kind of communication, an email maybe or something. And the bear suggests that this is quite significant. The um, moon and snake is a curious combination. I definitely think it points to discretion because the moon is also a softer card. And I think, uh, Leo, you could be looking at making a change, but I think you're also keeping it under your hat. Uh, so you need to be discreet about this or maybe you're figuring out the way to do this. And I think an indirect way uh, is a better way. Now the tower can represent a couple of different things. The tower can represent authority or something legal and administrative. And with the news and the moon and snake cards, you might need to approach someone at the top or someone um, expert or someone in, in this office, if you like, or in this situation that you're dealing with. And you need to approach them discreetly and see if you can move ahead or what's going on, you know, to get a sense of um, how to move forward in this new beginning. Now, the tower can also represent the past, and with the snake, there can be a moving away from a past situation, so letting go, turning in a different direction in the wake of this new beginning. So I definitely think you have good opportunities here, Leo. I think, though, that the way you go about taking up this opportunity or embracing it can be a bit tricky. You need to figure out certain things, and you might need to be indirect. Uh, and who you approach is also um, in the cards and it's a bit tricky in that sense. Now the child with the moon and tower is clearly a new phase and probably one that puts you on this direction for the longer term. So you wanna keep the long-term view in focus. Um, in this side though, I think the tower is a little bit different. With the bear snake and tower, I think the element of authority comes into the picture. The bear and tower often represent someone like a boss or um, usually it's a CEO or someone like that, but it doesn't have to be that high up. It can be someone of influence, uh, maybe a higher up. And with the snake here, maybe you need to consult with this person, but I think the snake asks you to be a bit discreet and also to be careful about who you trust. So I think with the news coming through, Leo, you might sit a, a little bit on it and think about how you what you do about this opportunity 
uh, think a little bit about it and see at what point you talk to the people who are involved or the people you need to consult. But I think there's going to be uh, some people that you might not immediately talk to, that you might be more indirect with uh, in order to figure out how you can take advantage of this um, opportunity. So for example, in the context of work, if you get a job offer or some kind of project and you need to maybe make a decision, it might be a bit premature to talk to your boss or your current boss or your current work workplace about it. You might want to think a little bit more about it before moving into this direction. Um, and I think this is mostly about your work, your practical life. I'm not really seeing personal relationships, but in case that's uh, it's about personal relationships for you, Leo, um, then I think that you could be considering something different or making a change in your life that affects the relationship and you are wondering how you know how you go about dealing with it that's a possibility and of course there are many relationships so there can be um, different uh, ways these cards apply specifically in your context but let me know leave me a comment and let me know what you think is playing out for you but I do think these are bright cards, Leo. So this is a new beginning, a new offer, a new opportunity. And then you have to figure out how you turn away from the current situation or make changes where you are in order to embrace this opportunity. So let me know what you make of these ideas, Leo. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Virgo, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what's ahead for you. Okay Virgo, here is your pyramid. There is quite a bit of contrast between this line and the other cards. We have the whip in the pyramid, which is a challenging card, and we see it with relationship cards. So very clear focus on relationships. We have the dog, the ring, and the man. So it's uh, all three cards are clear about that this focus this week is on relationships. The garden is also a card of relationships, except it tends to be a bit broader than one-to-one -one relationships. It tends to be about communities and, and places that you're part of. So obviously with the whip next to each of the relationship cards, there, there can be a challenge that comes up uh, and even a break off. Now, starting with the bottom row, we have the road with the dog and rain. Now, this would suggest, Virgo, that you are going down the path with this relationship. You're pursuing a relationship. And the dog and ring is great for a romantic relationship. It usually tells us that out of a friendship, something deeper is happening. So with the road, it's clear that it's unfolding. It can also point to commitments that you are involved in. So if it's not about a personal relationship, it's about involvements, your commitments, and uh, you're pursuing them as we see in this line. Now, the garden and whip is a challenging pair. It clearly suggests that a space is shaken up. There is uh, an argument between people. There's a problem that comes up. And with the man at the top, it adds to this. It can suggest that it has to do with this person, whether this person represents you or the other person in the relationship. So clearly with the whip man, whip garden, we have an argument that comes up. Um, so this can come a bit as I think it, it feels like it comes with a bit of a surprise because things are so peaceful here and you know you're just going down this path and going you know pursuing the relationship and then you have this pop you know you have the whip that shows up so it's it, the energy is quite in contrast to the bottom line so I feel that it might be unexpected and it it's like something it's something that pops out, you know, or blows up a little bit. Not to this extent, but you know, something that was maybe bubbling, you know, it comes out. That is possible. Now, the road with the garden and man suggests that you're going to go out and meet this person and you need to go and, um, you know, be with this person or meet, meet with them, maybe to bring this thing up. And the ring, whip, and man clearly points to a relationship issue, a problem, a break off, an argument. I think it really rocks the boat of the relationship because the whip is pretty strong usually. Um, so this is in focus this week, Virgo. It's a bit troublesome. There is something that comes up with a relationship or with a person and it sounds like you need to deal with it. Now within the week I'm not seeing a resolution outright 
or just yet. We'll see in the following week if something comes up. Uh, but you do need to spend time on this. So with the garden uh, and dog, garden and man, road and garden, you need to go out and be with this person and to understand what the problems are, you know, to figure things out. Or maybe when you are together with this person, something comes up. So this can be a nuance in the different scenarios. Um, and also, I do think the cards are more on the personal front, Virgo, but I, it might not be the case for every single Virgo out there, obviously. So it can be another relationship, maybe at work, maybe with family, uh, maybe in another area of your life where something comes up and you, you, know, you need to deal with it. It affects the relationship. So let me know what you make of these cards, Virgo. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Very best of luck with this. I would say, you know, just, you know, show up for the conversation and see if you can make sense of it, if it doesn't make sense, or see if you can work, start working on a resolution within the week. Very best of luck with this, Virgo. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Libra. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Libra, here is your pyramid and it's a little bit challenging because we have the whip at the top and we have the mouse and the birds next to it. So this triplet here at the top is a little bit challenging. The bottom one though is interesting. It points to a commitment or a proposal that you could be thinking about so what I'm thinking is that maybe you consider an option or a collaboration or even a relationship, but then with the top three cards, it's probable that you don't really go for this. Um, so this can be about a decision and maybe it's not challenging as such, but it's more, or I should say the whip is more about turning something down. So the ring and book is a key combination for a proposal or an offer. And the tree is a card of a slowness and wisdom. It tends to suggest sitting on something to consider it for perspective. So when we have the book and tree together, especially in view of the ring earlier, it can suggest that you are contemplating a proposal and you're thinking about an engagement or something that you get involved in or even a relationship. Now, in another sense, Libra, the book and tree can point to knowledge. And with the ring here, you could be uh, committing to learning, to self-improvement, uh, acquiring new, new skills and things like that. Now, that's possible, but I think it would, if it is, it would be in tandem with the other interpretation or the first interpretation because these three cards align better with considering an opportunity or a proposal. The bird and mouse can point to a conversation that's a little bit difficult, so it doesn't go as well as you'd like it to. In the context of a proposal or an offer and things like that, the bird often suggests negotiating and understanding more about the uh, offer so that you can tell if it's aligned with you or not. And so with the mouse, it doesn't go all that well. And with the whip, it suggests turning it down. So it looks to me, Libra, like you get an offer or an opportunity of sorts, but you determine that it is not good for you. And so you're gonna turn it down and say no. I also wanna suggest that before you say no, Libra, think about it, you know, at least, at least take it away and look at it and consider it, sit on it and see how well it aligns. So analyze it, let's say, but then I think you're gonna arrive at the conclusion that it's not fitting for you, so you're gonna, you're gonna turn it down. Now, the ring, bird, and whip is also a little bit challenging in this sense. The whip and bird normally suggests um, uh, gossip. I don't think this applies in here. Instead, I think it's more about this conversation that doesn't go too well or that, you know, where you discover that it's not aligned with you and where you, you turn it down. So you could turn down an offer, an involvement, or an opportunity that is represented by the ring and book. The tree, mouse, and whip suggests pretty much the same thing. It's just that the tree asks you to take time and to also tune into your sense of uh, your centeredness, your wisdom, because out of that space, I think you'll have a far better judgment. And I also think it gives you confidence to say no or to be honest about the shortcomings of this offer or opportunity or even relationship. So on second thoughts, Libra, the whip and bird and mouse, they're not 
challenging as such, like bringing you a problem, but instead they seem to suggest turning something down because that's how we can read them best in light of the bottom row. Now this offer or this involvement or relationship can happen in any context, Libra. We don't really see from the cards. Um, it could be something at work. It could be something with your business or uh, something in your personal life, um, some kind of opportunity or option or offer that you're considering. It can apply in any area, but in all cases, it doesn't look like it's aligned with you and you're probably best turning it down. But you let me know, Libra, let me know if what this offer was about or this idea or opportunity. And let me know if it was a more of a relationship and not so much uh, an involvement and in what area. I always look forward to your feedback. Um, so let me know how, how they, um, they resonated with you, these cards. Thank you for tuning in, Libra. Very best of luck with the week as always. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Scorpio, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what's ahead for you. Okay Scorpio, here is your pyramid. It's looking really bright because we have two very exciting cards. We have the Sun and Clover, and these are two of the brightest cards of the deck. On top of this, we have the ship, which is also an active and ambitious card. We have other travel cards, we have the road, and and the garden is about places and spaces and with the bear, it looks like there's something important happening here. So it's looking active and exciting. So starting at the bottom, we have the bear, ship and clover. Now the ship can be a card of travel, but it's also great for ambitions and going after things. It also suggests that results are coming in. And so with the bear, it can be an important trip that works out really nicely because of the clover. It can also be big ambitions that you're pursuing and the clover really encourages you to embrace that and you could also be looking at some significant rewards and outcomes coming from your effort here so any way you read these cards this is a lovely triplet now the sun and road is also beautiful the sun is one of the brightest cards of the deck. With the road, you could be going down a happy path. You could be entertaining some really positive changes. And also you could be on the right track to achieving your goals. So again, there is that element of progress, just like we saw with the ship. There's an element of movement. And uh, so it looks like things are unfolding positively. And it sounds like you're, you know, you're happy just going about, you know, pursuing these goals and objectives. And it can be a trip, so a physical trip. And at the top here, we have the garden. So the garden is a card of places, people, communities. So maybe you're going after a certain environment, you're heading to, um, to, to that place. Um, it depends in what area of your life it figures. We don't really see this from the cards, but it could be something social. It could be something work-related. It can point to your community or, for example, the market that you serve. It depends on the specific context that we see for you for these cards. But it's very active and it looks like you're going places, exploring options, being with people, networking, and also, I would say, having a good time. Um, and if it's not about a physical trip uh, with the ship and road at Scorpio, we, I think we still see that you've got success within a certain environment. So you're making progress and there's, I think you have presence and uh, positive involvements and engagements here. Now the bear sun and garden is clearly aligned with this. Um, I often take the bear and garden to suggest influence, authority, uh, popularity, you know, and with the sun, obviously this adds to your success. So you could be recognized within a certain environment, Scorpio, and maybe you're popular or, you know, you're making um, an impression uh, in a certain environment. So very lovely. And with the clover road and garden, it really encourages you to pursue these goals, to go to this place and to explore your options further in it. So really nice cards. Anyway, we look at them. I hope Scorpio that you will take time and initiative to engage and to pursue your goals. They are definitely worth it. They're definitely paying off. And I think you can also look forward to being popular or recognized or appreciated within a certain environment. Now, what environment? I think it's more about work and your practical affairs. I'm not really seeing personal relationship energies in this 
um, in this set of cards, but if it is, for, for some of you at least, um, then I think it, it can be great for getting together with people or with someone, um, exploring the relationship and really going down that path happily, uh, I would say. Otherwise, I think uh, what we were saying, your projects, uh, your goals and the rewards and popularity and appreciation are all in the cards. So very nice cards, Scorpio. Let me know how you resonated with them or in what context you feel they materialized for you. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you as always for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Sagittarius, here is your pyramid layout. It is looking mostly neutral, things happening. Uh, there are no challenging cards, but we do have the scythe, which can point to a change of direction. Now, I don't think it is challenging in this context when I look at the cards around it. I think it brings uh, an element of suddenness and there is activity that I think suddenly comes through. So starting at the bottom, we have the house, man, and tower. So the man represents just about anyone in your life. Um, but the thing about the man and woman cards is that they tend to represent people who are significant to us. So it's probably someone important to you. Now with the house, it can be someone close to home. It can be family or it can be a colleague uh, or it can be someone you know in a certain group of people. And the tower can point to a couple of different um, situations. It can point to a relationship from the past. It can also point to someone whom you know at work or in some formal capacity. It can be legal, administrative, or something like that. Um, so there is this person that comes into the picture here, and it, it seems that the focus is on him or partly on him this week. Now, the scythe and letter is sudden news. Um, it can be a breakthrough, it can be unexpected news or communication, and the lovely ship at the top suggests that this sets things into motion. So the ship is a travel card, it's a movement card, it's also great for ambitions and activities, and it's also great for seeing um, the efforts, uh, the rewards of your efforts. So when we look at these three at the top, it looks like there's news that breaks through that enables you to move forward. So it's the green light or some kind of change or something that sets things into motion. Now, the thing about these cards is that we don't see where the ship is heading. So things are set into motion within the week, but what happens now that you move forward is not yet within the week. Um, looking at the house, scythe and ship, uh, this can be a change of direction and it can also be a separation from a certain place. So this can be a move and this can be a bigger kind of change. Now where in your life, whether it's a house move or some other kind of moves, that's going to come down to your specific situation, Sagittarius. The tower with the letter and ship, again, I really think that something works out or you get a green light or it goes through and you're able to travel. So this can be something like getting a visa approved and you're able to, to pick up and leave. Uh, maybe this person helps out or maybe they're involved with your uh, travels. Or it could be something that sets into motion some project that you'd been wanting to do and it helps you uh, change things and it maybe causes you to have to change things around. It can also be an offer that you take up that enables you to break away from the current situation and enjoy this project. So it can be in any number of contexts, but we're definitely seeing things uh, working out or news coming through or applications and feedback coming in and they enable you to pick up and make those changes or engage in these projects. So I think this is pretty exciting, Sagittarius. Um, I think you should be ready to act on the news or the, uh, the feedback that comes through. And uh, if you need to involve certain people, then do that because it looks like you are gonna need their help and support uh, to engage uh, with this. Now, from a personal relationships pers perspective, I, I don't really feel it this way, but it's possible that you reconnect with someone and um, there is news, maybe unexpected, or contact, maybe unexpected, and it enables you to move forward in the relationship. So this too is a lovely set of cards for the connection. Now, what happens now that you pick up and move forward is again, not really clear within the cards or within the week, um, but there's definitely activity, things picking up, and forward movement. So in that sense, I think that's really bright.
Let me know what you make of these ideas, Sagittarius. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Capricorn, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. Okay Capricorn, these are some really interesting cards. We have some spiritual cards. We have the cross and key along with the book and we have a significant ending here that could be a little bit difficult, uh, but it seems to come in the wake of some positive answers. Um, so I feel there's a transition. I think this sort of aligns with what we saw last week. Um, and uh, we have the heart at the top, which suggests happiness. Uh, but also with the cross and the coffin, I feel there is a sense of wanting something or longing for something. So very interesting cards, and they seem to be spiritual. Like it seems to be more on the inside that the energies are playing out here. Now, the bottom row, we have the whip, cross, and key. Now, the whip and cross can be pretty difficult, I have to say, Capricorn. This is typically a combination for punishment and karma, and um, it can be challenges in general, sacrifices, uh, you know, heavy emotions, possibly regrets. But we do have the key on the other side here. So the key is great for solutions and resolutions. And with the cross, it can also bring out a spiritual element so there is a bit of a lesson learned or something deep that um, you get a sense of or that dawns on you or that lands on you. Uh, in a more practical way, we can see that you're able to solve problems. So something pretty challenging can be resolved or at least you start to see it resolved. Now the coffin and book is definitely a combination for closure and completion. So a chapter is closing and this could also be a continuation or building on this idea of the whip and cross where something falls through and you need to close it off and actually it's a good thing to do this. The heart at the top is interesting because it really brings out the emotions especially with these cards and I feel here you're having mixed emotions. Uh, we have some challenging cards with the heart, we have some positive cards with the heart so there seems to be a turning of the page, a closer of a chapter so with that there is a letting go, that could be the difficult part, and then there is the looking forward to the next chapter, which is the happy part. So it feels a bit mixed um, this week for you, and it, it definitely feels like there's a lot going on on the inside. But it's, I think it's good news that something is closing off, that a challenge is being resolved, and you're able to close the chapter. Now the whip, coffin, and heart is like the difficult emotions kind of part. Um, the whip and coffin can be an ending, a difficult ending, and with the, with the heart and coffin, it points to the need to let go of this. I don't think this is about something being on hold um, or having to wait or things like that because of the coffin. I think this is more of an ending. We have the coffin and book, which is a closure, end of a chapter, and the whip and coffin, which can be, uh, which can be pretty straightforward in terms of an ending. So with the heart, you have to let go of something with a bit of a heavy heart, Capricorn, but we do have the key with the book and heart on this side which points to unlocking feelings or getting ready to do so and the prospects of what happens next. So there is a bit of an anticipation of feeling that is playing out in these cards. Really interesting cards, I have to say, Capricorn. There is an ending that you have to let go of, let it go, and then you know that there's a new beginning on the other side of this. So it seems exciting. And also problem solving and solutions. And also answers and, and having the right information um, is also going to be great. It's going to make you happy. So really interesting cards. Um, I think there's a lot going on on the inside. Again, Capricorn, it seems that there are inner changes and exciting feelings and heavy feelings all coming together through this transition. Now, the cards really don't tell us in what area this is figuring. It could be something um, in any area of your life at home, relationships, at work or something. I'm not really seeing relationship cards as such. I think the heart is more about feelings, um, but it can apply to any context. So with relationships, this can be difficult. I think with a, an ending in sight, this can be difficult. Uh, but I think it sounds like it's the right thing to do. In other contexts, maybe you're resolving a difficult situation finally, and um, you know, you're still carrying some of the struggles. That's possible while you anticipate the new, the new beginning. Uh, let's say something on the job. I think there can be changes here, maybe difficult ones, um, possibly layoffs and, and things like that, or 
changes and restructurings, but I think you could see some opportunity on the other side of this. So I think Capricorn, this is quite a powerful reading. Again, I think it's mostly happening on the inside, but probably triggered from things in the outside and uh, an opportunity to learn and let go and to solve a problem, to come to terms with something and to be ready to close it off and move on to the next phase. So it can be heavy on the feelings, but also exciting and deep. I certainly look forward to your feedback about this Capricorn. Leave me a thought or two. Uh, this is quite an interesting set of cards. I think pretty unique. Uh, you know, if you've been watching your, your horoscope, your forecast with the cards, or if you've been watching others, other signs, you know, you'll see that these are some pretty unique cards. So let me know how it goes. Very best of luck with this Capricorn. Thank you as always for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Aquarius, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what's ahead for you this week. Okay, Aquarius, here is your pyramid. It's looking a little bit challenging. We have complications and things that are unclear that come up. And we have the man in the cards, which can suggest that this, is, this involves a person and that the issues or the complications are with this person or with regards to this person. And we have the clouds at the top, which tells me, Aquarius, that within the week, we don't really see a resolution through this. But I think what's going to be key is that you don't be reactive and you don't act on anything that's not settled. So this is a week for thinking about things more than anything else. Now, in the bottom row, we have the mouse with the bear and man. And this man can essentially represent anyone in your life, but it's usually someone who's pretty important to you, who's pretty significant. With the bear, it can suggest someone like um, a boss or someone in authority or even a parent or someone who is um, like has a level of authority or influence on your life. And with the mouse next to the bear, it can suggest challenges. I think that there is a, a level of intimidation or competition um, that could be at play as well. Uh, but I do think that there are issues that come up and I think that trust is going to be a significant issue as well. The snake cont contributes to this Aquarius because it is a card of secrecy and it represents someone who's pretty deceptive. And we see it next to the man along with the clouds. Now with the rider and snake, I think it's going to be important to be discreet and that you go about things in a careful and calculated way. I also think Aquarius that you can't share what you have in mind with everyone. I think you're going to need to be uh, careful and again calculated about what you share with whom. Now the clouds at the top suggest confusion, uh, cloudedness, tension and I think that some dust is going to be raised and I think things are going to get complicated and nebulous for you this week and they seem to involve this person. I think you're going to be confused about how best to deal with the issue. And I think, Aquarius, that it's a good idea that you take it away and think about it and avoid acting on doubts or acting uh, when you are not, you know, when you don't feel it totally. I think you need to sit on this for a while and think about it. The mouse with the rider and clouds definitely brings uh, obstacles in the way and the direction is not clear. Um, there are issues and bumps and it's not clear where this is all heading. And with the man, snake and clouds, it's clear that there are some pretty serious, I would say, question marks around this person, Aquarius. So this can be quite tricky this week. And it's not clear what you need to make of it just yet. But we definitely see that you don't want to act on it and definitely not act in any reactive way. So there are complications that come up. There are issues that come up and challenges with this person. And uh, you need to see how best to navigate them. At this time, Aquarius, you want to be discreet and calm and calculated. I would say try to keep a neutral front and keep things to yourself and think about them before you take any action. I think within the week, we don't see any actions. I think we see the issues coming up and these are going to confuse the situation and cause this tension that we're seeing. But again, you don't want to react to this. You don't want to take actions just yet. You want to s figure out what is going on, maybe seeing it unfolding as, uh, as the issues sort of complicate things. 
Now, in what context this is happening for you, Aquarius, that's pretty flexible. It depends. The cards don't really tell us. Um, but the relationship seems to be pretty important. It could be someone at work, like a boss or a colleague. It could be something else in your life, like a personal relationship that is souring a little bit at this stage. And there are issues and complications that you need to navigate. So the same dynamic applies regardless of the, con the context. So a little bit tricky this week, Aquarius. I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Maybe this didn't apply to you at all. Just, you know, take from it whatever you resonate with. Leave me your thoughts and comments. Let me know what were the complications or the, um, the things that you are trying to navigate. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your comments. Thank you for tuning in, Aquarius. As always, very best of luck with the week. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Pisces, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is ahead for you this week. Okay Pisces, here is your pyramid. Um, I think Pisces is always interesting, your cards. We have some lovely cards in here. We have the Clover, which is one of the brightest cards of the deck, and we see it next to the Bear and Tower. So actually, this is a very protective, um, energy and you are in for a long patch of good luck not just for now but i think well beyond the week uh, this has a very strong protection um, aspect so very interesting and very nice to see these cards now in the bottom row we see an ending we see the coffin and cross i have to say pisces sometimes this is a combination that refers to someone who has passed so if you connect with others who have passed on and you know do things like that it can bring uh, someone you had lost uh, through the man coffin and cross that is possible more commonly though the coffin and cross suggests an ending and with the man it points to an ending with regards to this person so probably a relationship now it's possible that this has been more of a waiting game so not necessarily a final ending, but an absence or things that were on hold for a while. And with the cross, it probably weighed heavily on you. Uh, maybe this was difficult, but it's possible and likely that this person comes back into the picture. Um, so this ending or this phase of waiting seems to come to a close. Now the bear and clover brings a whole lot of luck, uh, lots of benefits, lots of good fortune. Uh, the bear makes everything big. And so with the clover or anything else, it, or anything else positive like that, it brings quite a lot of luck and, uh, and well-being. So this can be a combination for healing, for recovering, for achieving bigger goals, and really being in touch with your sense of power. So very nice cards. The tower at the top can refer to a couple of things. It can be something from the past, which would tie in nicely with a relationship. And in this sense, there can be connecting, uh, the idea of connecting with someone from the past. It can also refer to authority, uh, something legal or administrative. And so maybe this man has to do with um, some, some, some authority that has influence on your affairs. And obviously with the clover, they give you support, they bring you answers, and they help you move forward with your goals and your projects or whatever the matter is at hand. So the man, bear, and tower. I often take the bear and tower to suggest someone like an authority, often a, a boss, a bigger boss, sometimes a CEO and people like that. And so this clearly represents who this person is. The cross, clover, and tower, I have to say Pisces is a really spiritual combination. It brings a lot of luck. It's like your path is taken care of and you are on the right track. So quite a spiritual combination. Tying it into the more day-to-day -day stuff here with this guy, um, it looks like you get support, you get the answers that you want, your goals materialize. And I do think, Pisces, that this opens up something pretty important over the longer term. Remember that we said these three cards at the top, they have a very strong protective. They have a very strong protective energy. And when we look at the other cards and especially this uh, side here, uh, it points to uh, some kind of path that opens up being on the right track. There is also, I have to say, Pisces, there is an element of mystery. 
the tower can be a bit mysterious and so can the cross and clover. The clover brings a lot of luck, but in my experience, it is not always what we expect it to be. So there can be a turn of events and things materializing in a way that maybe you didn't anticipate, but I do think it's very beneficial. I think it's very exciting, but I also think maybe you don't see the full extent of what is going on here. So quite an interesting set of cards. I love the protective energy here. It is so clear. I haven't seen this before in other layouts. Uh, definitely not yours. I haven't seen this before in other layouts. Um, definitely not the weekly forecasts. So very beautiful cards to see. This is important. I think this is an important step. Um, there is something important happening here, uh, Pisces. If you need to wait a little bit on it, that is fine. Um, but uh, when things start to move, it's going to be it's going to be quite amazing and quite interesting. Have faith in yourself and your path, Pisces. Have faith that things are moving in a very interesting direction and be ready to enjoy this. <laughs> Let me know what you make of these cards. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Very best of luck with the week. And until next time, take very good care of yourself.